One of the most common questions I'm asked is, how do I know if I have dementia? Dementia is one of the most common medical conditions for older people, affecting around one in 10 people over the age of 65. And while awareness is increasing and there is less stigma around, there are still many misconceptions about dementia. First of all, we all have forgetfulness. It's normal for your memory to be affected by daily life, by tiredness, by stress, depression or anxiety, and several illnesses. And it's also true that our memory and our other brain functions sadly decline as we get older. But dementia is absolutely not just aging. Becoming forgetful or more forgetful does not mean that you have dementia. So what is dementia? Clinically, dementia is defined as a decline in our brain functions. And that decline has to be more than the forgetfulness that we all experience to some extent as we get older. And the decline has to be significant enough to affect our day-to-day -day activities of living. It is usually, but not always, progressive. Dementia is really a very non-specific term. It's no more specific than brain failure. And it has many different causes and many different types. The human brain has amazing complexity and sensitivity, which means it can do amazing things, but also can go wrong in a number of different ways. In every single one of our brains, there are billions of neurons, each with thousands of connections, and each is sensitive to damage and degeneration. That is the essence of what makes us a thinking human. And different parts of the brain are important for different functions. They're all connected, but there are parts that are really critical. And if brain cells are damaged or die in a particular part of the brain, they may affect our memory, our language skills, our visual skills, our ability to plan, or how we behave, or many of these things at the same time. It's also important to say what dementia is not. It's not just aging. It's not a single disease. It's a non-specific syndrome which has many causes. And no one is immune prime ministers to presidents to every one of us. But some things, like repeated brain trauma, do make dementia more likely. What are the different types of dementia, or the different underlying causes of dementia? There are many causes. The most common are Alzheimer's disease and vascular dementia. Alzheimer's disease is a degenerative dementia, it is usually memory-led, but may start with visual or language problems. Vascular dementia, which is primarily due to problems with blood supply to the brain, may present in different ways. If a large blood vessel gets blocked, that may cause an obvious stroke, part of the body not working properly, a weakness, or a loss of language suddenly. But if small vessels, gradually get blocked. There's no obvious sudden change, no obvious stroke. But over time, speed of thinking can reduce and problems with memory and planning develop. Dementia with Lewy bodies, which overlaps with dementia due to Parkinson's disease, these are closely linked, there may be problems with movement or tremor and slowing, as well as with thinking. And there can be quite prominent fluctuations, and visual hallucinations. In front of temporal dementia, problems start and may remain predominantly with changes in behavior or a loss of language abilities. Alzheimer's disease usually starts with memory, but can start with problems with language or vision. Other dementias typically start with non-memory problems, such as a deterioration in one's ability to speak or to understand, or with alterations in behavior and personality. To find out more about these less common dementias, you may want to visit Rare Dementia Support. That's at www.raredementiasupport.org. The first symptoms or problems that are experienced in dementia can vary, and they depend upon the cause, the underlying problem that is affecting the brain. Symptoms depend upon what parts of the brain are being predominantly 
or primarily affected. Memory problems, for example, are the most common first symptom of dementia. And this is because Alzheimer's disease is the most common cause. And Alzheimer's usually, but not always, first starts in the parts of the brain that are involved in storing new memories. And so it often starts with forgetfulness, particularly forgetfulness for recent events. But we all forget things, most commonly because we haven't properly paid attention. So how do we know what's normal and what's not, and what might be the start of Alzheimer's disease or another dementia? First of all, it's really important that it, this is a change for that person. We're all different in our skills, our memory abilities, our language, etc. And the second thing that's really important is that that symptom, for example, forgetfulness, is progressive and usually much more progressive than other people of a similar age. The forgetfulness involves forgetting things that we would normally expect that person to remember. The sort of problems that are typical of Alzheimer's disease are becoming progressively more repetitive in questioning. For example, asking several times, what time is my appointment with the doctor, even though I've recently been told that? Or misplacing items, we all lose our keys, but this that occurring more than had been happening previously. Or putting items in a rather unusual and unexpected place. And it's also common that people find it harder to learn new tasks, such as getting to grips with a new TV remote control or some other piece of equipment that one would have expected somebody to learn easily. Over time, Alzheimer's disease progresses to affect other parts of the brain. So problems will develop uh, with language, with calculation, or with planning. So what can we all do to reduce our chances of getting dementia? Uh, the brain is amazingly complex and easily damaged. It's important to do our best to maintain a healthy brain to reduce risk of dementia, which may occur many years later. First of all, what's good for your heart is also good for your brain. So we've known for many years that smoking, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and diabetes are all risk factors for heart disease. And we also now know that there are risk factors for dementia. And while it is never too late to address these risk factors, we also know now that it's almost never too early. And what we do or don't do in midlife may affect our chances of dementia in later years, potentially decades later. Excess alcohol, Head injuries also increase the risk of dementia. And staying physically well also helps your brain to stay well. <laughs>